Good morning. Is this is this thing on? We're good. All right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, outdoor worship. Our full-fledged three-pronged worship. Right. So we uh, have folks here that are uh, in chairs, and we welcome you here, and we thank you for joining us this way. Folks in your cars, hello, welcome. Thanks for being here. And those of you who are watching on Facebook Live this morning, we are live on Facebook, we hope. So welcome, Facebook Live people. We are glad that you're worshiping with us that way. And uh, we, we thank you all for your willingness to uh, uh, go with us on this, uh, this weird journey of worship right now in this time. Uh, we thank you for your patience as we've tried new things and we've attempted to do different things along the way and we are grateful that we have uh, finally found a way based on what you've told us and what we have uh, we have heard from others to be the most comfortable way for all of us to worship together and so we thank you for all the ways that you are uh, helping us with this including by uh, wearing your masks I know outside uh, that uh, I, I know that it's become uh, an uncomfortable thing in a lot of ways, but this is the way that we can feel all the most comfortable. And so I appreciate each and every one of you uh, helping out with that. You are making this possible. So we're grateful for that. Uh, the other thing is this morning, uh, hopefully you had a chance to read through all those worship guidelines. Basically this morning, just sit back and enjoy worship. Uh, allow for us to uh, uh, bring to you the Word of God and bring to you some uh, music and some familiar things this morning. And uh, 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 sit back and enjoy worship from, where, from wherever you are this morning. Uh, just a few announcements before we get going this morning. Uh, Many of you have known that we have a uh, food pantry in our in our lobby here on the, the back side of the church. That is meant to be uh, in uh, cooperation with the uh, community service center. It's not meant to be in competition, but in cooperation. It's for uh, any added need during this time of uh, uncertainty with jobs and with uh, finances. And so if you know anyone who is in need, in a, just a little bit of extra need this time, uh, during this time, send them our way. They can come in. That door is open and ready, and there are some items in there for uh, for uh, uh, families to take. Uh, also, we begin uh, this week. Hopefully, some of you had the chance to join us for our uh, camp house at your house week this week on Facebook. Uh, we're heading into another virtual thing this week. We are going to do a virtual v, uh, vacation Bible school. We've got uh, somewhere around 20, 20, 25 kids signed up for this week, but there's plenty more uh, materials and plenty more uh, space for you to participate. Uh, please tune in, even if you're not a young, uh, young child, tune in and watch the videos. You won't, uh, won't be disappointed, I promise, on, on, on some of them. Uh, the, we're, uh, we're going to be doing that together on Facebook uh, all week along. So please join us for that. And if you would still like to sign up, you can find the link on our website. You can sign up and we'll get you anything that you need. Also, uh, this morning we will not be doing uh, communion, but we will be planning on doing communion next week together. We, uh, we're waiting on uh, some extra communion supplies to come in, and they are in now, and we will uh, we'll come up with a plan and communicate that plan for communion uh, to be at, during the service uh, next Sunday. Okay, so uh, please plan for that and, and uh, let people know that communion will be happening next Sunday. With that, our announcements are over, and let us begin our time this morning with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food fill all the starving world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sins in the, in the presence of God and in, of one another. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people 
turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of, the whole, of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us now join together in confessing our sin. We pray, most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, if you've been following along this summer, we've been uh, continuing the tradition of a children's message with our trusty bucket. And uh, we, were, we have uh, been trading off, Pastor Paul and I, all summer long. And uh, the one rule is that there is no rules. And so uh, if you've seen them, they've been, they've been pretty interesting. Pastor Paul stumped me a couple weeks ago with something that nobody knew what it was, although some people came through on Facebook. Uh, and uh, YouTube, uh, but I don't know what's in the bucket, and we're going to try a children's message this morning based on it, okay? So here we go. Is this okay, Nate? This will work? All right. Here we go. Oh, okay. This is, this is a stress ball shaped like a brain. And this stress ball shaped like a brain is something that Pastor Paul has been carrying around in his pocket for uh, the last several months, squeezing it to make his brain healthy. And we're, 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 we're trusting that this is the thing that's doing it, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. Uh, so Pastor Paul has been, uh, uh, you, you all know that uh, hopefully that Pastor Paul has been dealing with some symptoms of a concussion. And this uh, thing, he was, he was given this several uh, months ago as part of his uh, tr treatment and part of his rehab to uh, make sure that he's squeezing this and this is uh, helping his brain get healthy. Uh, I also like stress balls because I don't have a concussion but I do have stress. Raise your hand if you've got a little stress. Raise your hand if your stress has been maybe enhanced a little during all of this. Yes. Okay, so maybe, maybe I need to get myself a stress ball shaped like a brain. Or I don't, yeah, I don't know what something, uh, but this is a, a a great way of of, of relieving stress and uh, helping helping th things get better. I don't know what I'm going to do beyond that little explanation I gave. Let's see here. You know, I think uh, it's it's helpful to have uh, things like this, places we can turn that help us to uh, relieve stress or to give things over to something else. Uh, it may not seem like much, but this does actually relieve a lot of stress and it, it does help to uh, get things out of you that uh, you, you don't want there. Uh, and so it's helpful to have things in our life that help us to get things out of our head and, and, and into something else or uh, uh, something that we can give our problems over to. We have a God who is just like this, that we can turn to with these stressors with the things that are uh, getting us down, the things that are uh, not so healthy about us, and we can give them over to God and we can allow for God to, to take them and uh, to um, make us whole again. And so while we're hoping that this stress ball is part of the treatment plan and the thing that gets Paul back to wholeness, uh, we are we we hope that we also have a God that we can turn to with our stress and turn to with our anxiety Turn to with our sorrow and our brokenness that will take it from us and make us whole again uh, So will you pray with me? Let us pray dear God. We give you thanks 
for the ways that you relieve our stress and anxiety and take the things from us that we don't need to hold on to and uh, take them from us and make us whole again. We give you thanks for this time to be together and for all the people who are gathered with us, with us in all different ways and uh, give thanks for all that you do for us uh, now and always. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I read the gospel message today, I, I invite, to, there's plenty of room up here on the grass, so if, if you'd like to come up front and sit in the grass, you're sure welcome to, but if you're standing where you want to be, uh, that is okay too. It is wonderful to see all of you this morning. Our reading today comes from Matthew chapter 14, starting with verse 13. After John the Baptist is murdered, Jesus desires to desires a time of solitude. Still, his compassion for others will not allow him to dismiss those who need him. And he has moved to perform one of the greatest miracles. Starting with verse 13. Now when Jesus heard about the beheading of John the Baptist, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. And Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. And they replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus, the risen Christ. Amen. Jesus must have been overcome with grief. He had just heard of the killing of his friend John the Baptist. Needing some space from others, Jesus looked for a little bit of solitude. That time of solitude was going, wasn't going to happen. His time was interrupted by a crowd that had gathered crowd filled with people that were ill and that were hurting. People in desperate need of comfort and compassion. Jesus puts aside his own grief to meet the needs of those who had gathered to see him. Have you ever had someone knock on your door to see you or watch you outside working on something and they notice you're there, so they stop for a minute. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but either way, during those times, we feel a bit of interruption to our day. And what if they just need a time to chat with you, or spend time with someone? Maybe they need to connect with another human being. It's not a big stretch for us to imagine that during this time that we're in right now, is it? As we do our best to social distance when we long just simply to be together. How easy it is for us to look upon those interactions as an interruption to what we had planned. If this has happened to you, don't, don't worry. 
you're in good company. It happens to me. But often, as quick as I am irritated by the interruption, I am just as quickly filled with gratitude for the interaction. I was told once, and I believe it, that those interruptions are where real life happens. It is where holy moments take place. That does not mean that they are always easy or that we see the beauty of that moment each and every time. It just means that if we pay a little more attention to the person in front of us, there's a mutual benefit that occurs. Jesus teaches us in these first few verses of our reading for today of the importance of the people that are right in front of him. He demonstrates a deep compassion by comforting and healing the sick. This part of our story is often overlooked because the rest of these verses point us to the feeding of the 5,000, one of Jesus' most amazing miracles. Feeding all those people with just a handful of bread and a few fish. That's amazing. Yet I think this passage is filled with several miracles. Jesus' willingness to put aside his own grief for the immediate need of those around him. His demonstration of caring and concern for those that tended to be overlooked. Teaching his own disciples. Teaching them that taking care of someone's immediate needs is a real form of following Jesus. It is demonstrating, it is demonstrated here and continues to be a tenant of our Christian faith that we are to care for the needs of those that are hurting and those that are hungry. Now it's, it's also easy to think that that means we hand out a few band-aids and some cookies and we're good to go. But that's wrong. I wish it was that easy. I wish that the hurt and hunger was easily recognized. But we're reminded by Jesus of more. It is easy to meet the needs of people when the issue is obvious. A broken bone needs crutches. An empty stomach needs food. All true. But there are a lot of hurting people out there. And maybe right here, right now, that do not have a hurt that is easily seen. It may take some care and comfort, some patience, and even perseverance to help them in their time of need. Oh, and food. Yes, we should fill the empty bellies that go hungry, but there are also a great many people that hunger for grace. They hunger for love. They hunger for acceptance and hope. When Jesus takes the time to feed all these people with bread and fish, it took care of their immediate needs. But he also gave them something that would sustain their deeper need. The need of acceptance. Jesus demonstrated that through these acts of grace and mercy, they were accepted. He demonstrated that those gathered right there in that place, they were worthy. He said through his actions that they didn't need to do anything, achieve any goal, climb any mountain to be accepted into the kingdom of God. God accepted them the way they were. They were hungry and Jesus fed them. Not because they did anything in their entire life that gave them a right to that very gift. And if that were the case, it would not have been a gift at all, would it? No, the miracle of the fish and loaves is not about the number that were fed. It's not about the fact that they started with so little and God made enough for all. The true miracle is that God continues to feed all of God's people, Christian or not. 
The true miracle is that God makes enough for all despite all the ways we try to muddy the waters by deciding who we think should receive those gifts. And make no mistake, we put all sorts of hoops and hurdles up for people to make the cut. This is an important point for us today. Because if you hear words in our world that sound like they exclude someone for whatever reason, those are not words befitting someone who claims to follow Christ. If you find yourself uneasy about someone's stance on something that you know to be hurtful to someone else, that's also contrary to the love of Jesus. We need more than ever to stop ourselves when we feel drawn into arguments that get us nowhere. And instead, do as Jesus does. Simply care for the hurting soul that's right in front of us. We do not need to argue with them. We don't even have to like them. We simply have to show compassion and comfort for them. I say simply, but we all know this isn't simple at all. It's darn hard work, but we need to do it. We need to step out and step up and make good trouble as John Lewis called it. Good trouble by caring for those around us. Good trouble by feeding the needs of the most hungry. Good trouble by looking past political ideologies to the person that longs to be heard. The disciples were missing this message. The disciples were not being rude when they suggested that they tell the crowd to disperse so they could go find some food. They were looking out for Jesus. They were looking out for all those that were hungry knowing they didn't have much to spare. This is often pointed out as an example of the disciples' selfishness, but that isn't exactly accurate. I don't know about you, but I am thankful for this act and this fact that the disciples ask these questions because it is also, it is all too often that I too miss the opportunity that is right in front of me to demonstrate how to love my neighbor. Maybe you too miss those opportunities as well. Well, Jesus teaches the disciples and all of us that we have a responsibility to our fellow humans. Notice what I said there, our fellow humans. I didn't put, put the qualifying statement, fellow Christians, I said humans. Those who knew and believe, I'm sorry, Jesus didn't meet the needs of those who proclaimed him as Savior, those who knew and believed he was the Son of God. He did not have concern only for those who believed as he did, acted as he did, looked like he did. No, Jesus comforted those in his presence, whoever they were. The act of caring is a far deeper, richer, more profound form of evangelism than any lecture or sermon that I have been a part of. Jesus is teaching us to help meet the basic needs of people, putting us in a unique place to be real with one another, to get on our knees with one another when there is pain. That is holy time. To hold someone's hand when they, they grieve, that's a precious gift. To listen to someone when they just need to speak out loud about their pain, that's an act worthy of our time and our energy. Why well, I had hoped to give out this morning a piece of warm bread to each of you today. Something that came right out of the oven so you could still smell that warm bread. If you close your eyes, maybe you can imagine that right now. 
for all sorts of reasons that couldn't happen. But I want you to just think about that warm bread for a moment. That gift of bread is meant to symbolize the body of Christ. Given to you so that you might remember that God's Son gave his life for you. And gave his life for the people that cross your path. And join us all on this journey of life. All of them. That gift of comfort, the warmth of compassion, the hope of eternal life, all of that is wrapped up in a gift freely given to you and to me and to all the people that we meet. May we just as freely give it to others as Jesus has given it to us. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for showing us compassion when we need it most. Thank you for giving us interruptions to our days where we can see you and the people around us. Give us wisdom to take those opportunities, to be examples of you to everyone that we meet. Especially now, Lord, during this time of confusion and overwhelming thoughts, calm our souls so that we may be present and that others may be present for us. And remind us in the bread that you gave your life for each and every one of us so that we may not be concerned with what comes next and have hope in the future you've provided. In your name we pray. Amen. And I believe on your cards you have the words to a hymn, Children of the Heavenly Father. And we invite you to share in that with us now. And now confident of God's care and helped by the Holy Spirit, let us take a moment now to pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Let us pray. O oh God, you take resources that appear to be meager, bless them, and there is enough. May your church trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Reverse the damage we have caused your creation. Replenish groundwater supplies. Provide needed, needed rains in places of drought and protect forests fr from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. You offer yourself to all the nations and peoples of the earth, inviting everyone to abundant life. Bring the prophetic vision to fullness that all nations will run to you and that nations who do not know you will find their joy in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You offer freely the fullness of salvation. Give our congregation such a welcoming heart that our words and actions may extend your free and abundant hospitality to all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You gather your saints as one, united in the body of Jesus Christ. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember all those who have gone before us with love and thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the, sur in the sure and certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Before I send you on your way with a blessing, uh, a reminder to uh, be mindful of uh, distancing as you uh, make your way out of here and also a reminder that uh, we will be continuing this uh, each Sunday now as long as weather permits and so uh, we're not there's no end date on these outdoor services together and we will keep you posted on anything that changes uh, moving forward but I want to say again uh, thank you to everyone who came this morning in all the ways that you joined us on Facebook Live, in the sitting in chairs, in your cars. We're, we're grateful for your flexibility and your willingness, again, to go with us on this. And we are so grateful for each and every one of you and your support and your love through all of this. Uh, and so we will uh, see you again, hopefully, next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. in all of these same ways. And we give thanks uh, in advance. And also we'll be uh, in, uh, having communion uh, during that service as well. So make sure that that get word gets out. Uh, so I send you now on your way with uh, this blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless each of you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.